In this video, I'm gonna share with you guys the best Google Ads strategy for e-commerce in 2024. This is the exact strategy I'm currently using to generate anywhere from three to $400,000 a month with Google Ads only. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome on over. My name is Juan Valdez and I run my own e-commerce brand. I also help other e-commerce brands scale using growth infrastructures. Now, with that said, let's get right into it. So the first thing I wanted to go over is just live results. So as you guys can see, we're here inside of the Google Ads dashboard dashboard and uh, we're looking at currently the performance for last month as you guys can see this is not a screenshot here's a full breakdown of the performance every single day of the month as you guys can see and let's go over these results really briefly again these are the results for the e-commerce brand that i run so again i'm not just sharing with you guys theories and concepts i'm showing you guys things that's actually working right now so we ended the month with 4900 conversions we spent eighty-eight thousand dollars on ads we generated three hundred and thirty thousand dollars in sales and we ended the month with a 3.73 return on ad spend. So in my experience, these are very typical results for Google ads when you're actually using Google ads the right way. Since I've been running Google ads since 2017, I have seen that Google is the most profitable usually and the highest converting channel across all of the brands that I've ever worked with. So I wanted to start off by obviously sharing with some live results with you guys. Now I have a couple things that I want to go over, but before I dive in, one of the things that I wanted to say is if you're currently only advertising, on Meta or only on TikTok and just competing with everybody else and you're not leveraging Google Ads, you will be losing out on a lot of opportunity. I can confidently say that. Another thing is I genuinely believe that everybody should be leveraging Google Ads. From my experience, most brands, they think that Google Ads is only really used for bottom of funnel and branded traffic and that couldn't be further from the truth. And in this breakdown, I'm actually going to share exactly how you can leverage Google Ads to its full potential. Now, again, essentially what I have done is I have built out an actual full funnel infrastructure with Google Ads. As you guys know, Google Ads has multiple different placements. You have Google Search, Google Shopping, YouTube Ads, Google Display. And so what I do is I focus on leveraging all of the available networks to my advantage with an actual strategy and approach. And so here I have a complete outline of the full strategy. I'm going to share everything with you guys. And um, the first thing I wanted to go over is what I have found to work best consistently with Google is having your account structured based on the different levels of the funnel that you're looking to target. So for example, a lot of you guys may already know this, but you have top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel. And so with each stage of the funnel, I personally believe that you should have different campaigns with different intents and different objectives for each one. So let's go over each one here. So the first thing that we have is top of funnel. So what I'm currently doing is leveraging two main campaign types for top of funnel. I'm leveraging non-brand search, YouTube short, and I'm going to go over specifically how in each one. So something that I have found to consistently work is looking for non-brand keywords, meaning keywords that are not related to the name of the brand and are not related to the brand at all. And specifically the high intent keywords. So ideally, you know, if you sell a product, an example of a high intent keyword would be the name of the product for sale, right? That's a very high intent keyword that only somebody searching to buy the product would be looking for. And so what I have found to really work best to help attract brand new customers Customers that has never engaged with our brand before is focusing on those kind of keywords, right? That are very high intent because on Google, usually when people go on Google, they're already ready to buy. They're just looking where to buy from. And so if you can make sure that you spend the time looking for the right keywords to target, you can actually generate a lot of top of funnel traffic with Google search. A lot of people don't do this because in their experience, they don't get results from search, but that's usually because they're not focused on the high intent keywords. They'll target low intent keywords that don't actually lead or attract actual potential customers. So that's one thing I wanted to go over. Now, next we have YouTube Shorts. So YouTube Shorts has completely blown up over the last two years. And the reason why is because YouTube wants to compete with channels like TikTok with their short form content. So what they've done is they've put a lot more emphasis on short form content and specifically on YouTube Shorts. So before, most brands were not attracted to YouTube because you had to create a completely different style of video and also like a much more higher quality video to be able to actually get results with YouTube. But now with YouTube Shorts, the best content and ads that actually work on YouTube Shorts are native selfie style TikTok content. And so for us, what we do is whatever content is working really well for us on TikTok and on Instagram Reels, we take that same content, we run it as ads on YouTube Shorts. And this has been a complete game changer. And the reason why is because first off, we can use existing assets that we already have that's working on other channels. And then two, you can get hyper specific with the audience that you target with YouTube. 
YouTube Shorts. We focus on targeting high intent keywords because you can target based on the keywords that people search on Google or on YouTube. And we also focus on targeting different URLs. We focus on targeting different competitor URLs and other relevant URLs that we think we could get traffic from. And so for Top of Funnel, these two campaigns absolutely crush, right? It really helps us unlock and attract new users and new potential customers that we would have never reached unless we were running these specific campaign types. So that's for Top of Funnel. Now let's get into Middle of Funnel. So for Middle of Funnel, these are the main three campaign types that we focus on. So we have Standard Shopping. Obviously, if you're not familiar with Standard Shopping, Standard Shopping are the product ads that you see when you go onto Google and you search for a specific product. They're gonna be usually the first ads that you see before any of the search results or any of the search ads. And in my experience, for e-commerce, shopping is the highest performing type of ad that you could run on Google. From my experience, majority of the budgets that's allocated for Google Ads or e-commerce goes towards shopping. And so for the middle funnel, we focus on standard shopping campaigns. One of the things that we do that's very important is we exclude our brand keywords. And the reason we do this is because we wanna make sure that we have a segmented campaign that's meant for non-brand traffic. This is very important. Something that a lot of people don't talk about in this space is the importance of having segmented campaigns between non-brand and brand campaigns. And so again, this is something that if you don't do, you'll have an overlap in traffic. Well, you'll have both branded traffic and non-brand traffic in the same campaign, and you won't be able to accurately measure the performance of that specific campaign. So this is the first one. Next, we have Pmax. You guys are probably familiar with it. If you're not, it's just Google's new campaign type. And here we do the same thing. So we exclude our brand keywords so we can really um, make sure that we're segmenting this campaign away from our branded traffic. Next is competitor search. This is actually something that I don't see many people do. And so in my experience, I have found that if you have relevant competitors that are actually getting a lot more traffic than you are, you can research what their highest performing keywords are. There's plenty of tools out there that you can use and you can go after their high intent keywords, things like the name of their competitor of their product plus for sale, right? Like I previously mentioned for the other high intent keyword example that I shared with you guys, you can go after those types of keywords and you can actually capture traffic away from your competitors. What I have found to work best is having ads that highlight what differentiates your brand versus your competitor, things like why you're better, if you have more reviews, all of these things that basically make your brand stand out compared to competitors. And I have found this to work extremely well. This is something that I don't see many people talk about, but yeah, this, this definitely works. You notice that also Amazon does this all the time, by the way. And so, yeah, one of the things that, the way that we break this down is we focus on targeting the highest intent brand keywords, meaning just the name of the brand, right? not the product itself and then we'll target competitor the name of the competitor products and other keywords as well right and but the key here is again high intent keywords you don't want to just target usually like for example we usually see that when we target just the name of the competitor brand we see less performance and you know higher cpas higher cost for conversions compared to when we target just the name of the competitor product because somebody searching for the name of the competitor product is completely higher intent and much more qualified and somebody just searching for the name of the competitor brand, right? And so that's one thing I wanted to highlight here. Now, last but not least, we have bottom of funnel. This is the structure in the campaigns that I use specifically for bottom of funnel. And so first we have brand shopping in Pmax. So typically what I'm doing here is I'm doing the opposite of what I did in the other campaign. And so here I'm excluding keywords that are not related uh, to the brand. So any keywords that we show up for that again, don't have the brand name in it, I'm typically excluding those. I'm doing the same thing with Pmax. So brand shopping and Pmax, I'm doing the same thing because I want to have, what I have found to work best is having specifically a brand shopping and a brand Pmax campaign specifically focused on, again, people that are searching specifically for your brand and your products. Next, we have brand search. So this is the most common type of campaign that almost every single brand runs and where you know, most brands see their performance from. Of course, I think it's very important to run brand search because if you don't, another competitor see that you're not running brand search, they can actually target your keywords words, just like I mentioned in the previous example, right? Sometimes the reason why this competitor campaign works is because there are sometimes competitors that we come across that aren't running Google ads. And so what we do is we take advantage of that opportunity. Next, we have display remarketing. So for those of you guys that don't know about display remarketing, the ads that you see whenever you go to Forbes or a news site on the sides of the website, that's actually called a display ad. And so with display ads, you can actually reach 80% of the web because a lot of websites allow Google to advertise on it. And so if you 
cover or display, the reach you can get is just massive, right? You can also advertise across Gmail and overall like the reach is just insane. And so because of that, what we have found to work best is running display remarketing. What we do is we take it a step further. So we go very specific with the audiences that we target with display remarketing. And this is a preview of what it looks like. So we typically have separate campaigns, sometimes just separate ad groups for each of these. But to keep it simple, what we do is what you can do is you can just create one campaign and have separate ad groups for each one. But what we do is again, we have one ad group that's going to be only for website visitors, one ad group for only product page visitors, and then one ad group for cart abandoners. And the reason why we separate these is because each of these audiences have a different level of intent. People that only make it to your website, but don't make it to the product page, well, that's a completely different level of traffic and intent, right? And so you're typically gonna see that when you only target your website visitors, you're gonna have a higher cost for conversion and your performance isn't gonna be that good. However, when you target specifically cart abandoners, this is an audience that has made it all the way to adding a product to cart. This is somebody that's very interested. So for them, maybe you know, life happened and they got distracted. It doesn't mean that they're not interested because they didn't finish your purchase. Sometimes people just need a reminder. So we have found that having campaigns segmented out by different steps within the buyer's journey really works best from an optimization standpoint. Next, we have YouTube Shorts. So we leverage YouTube Shorts for top of funnel, but also bottom of funnel. So for YouTube Shorts, we take a similar approach. We segment out the campaigns by different steps in the buyer's journey. So we step segment out by, again, website visitors, product page visitors, and cart abandoners. And we have found that, again, taking the top performing creatives from Meta and from TikTok and taking those ads and running them on YouTube Shorts works extremely, extremely well. I have yet to come across a brand that does not have an audience that uses YouTube. And that's why there's so much opportunity. This is something that's heavily overlooked by a lot of brands. And so overall, again, this is the high level overview of the exact strategy I'm currently using. And in my opinion, the best strategy for e-commerce in 2024. Obviously for every single brand, you know, you have a different criteria based on how many products you have, your profit margins, et cetera. So there are some more specifics that you'll need to um, hone in on as you're kind of building out this approach. But in my opinion, if you're looking to get the most out of your Google ads, this is the kind of infrastructure that you want to have in place. This is what I'm seeing work consistently well, not only for my brand, but also for other brands that we work with. And so, yeah, I mean, this is the main thing I wanted to cover. This video is in no way, shape or form meant to take you away from the other marketing channels that you're currently using. I am a big fan of Meta, a big fan of TikTok, but I believe that if you're not leveraging Google ads with this kind of infrastructure alongside with your other marketing efforts, you're losing out on a lot of opportunity. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is I want to give you guys a bonus. So something that I see very commonly in the space is almost nobody talks about Bing ads. And so for those of you guys that are not familiar with Bing ads, Microsoft ads, this is basically just another network that you can advertise on. And it's very similar to Google. And so in case you guys didn't know, Bing has over 140 million daily active users and it's actually they're up on their daily users year over year 40 percent to be exact because of their uh, new ai features that they actually rolled out and so the crazy thing is is that you barely see any advertisers on the platform and that's why there's opportunity for you guys from my experience the cost per clicks are fairly cheap and the average order values from customers that buy on bing is extremely high compared to other platforms so what i wanted to briefly go over here for bing is once you already have a full funnel structure built out within google and you're fully maximized again, search, shopping, display, YouTube, and you're getting good results. There's actually a really easy integration that Bing ads actually already has with Google. You can actually just import your campaigns from Google over to Bing. And so what I'm currently doing is taking advantage of the same exact infrastructure as I'm leveraging with Google ads, but for Bing. And to kind of show you guys like what this looks like, here is a preview of the performance for last month. So last month on Bing ads, we spent $12,000. We generated 900 conversions, generated $51,000 in sales, and we had a 4.2x return on our ad spend, which is absolutely insane. We're literally getting a higher return on ad spend on Bing than we are getting on Google. And this is actually pretty common because again, on Bing, there's less competition and you know the cost per clicks are lower. And so I genuinely believe that there is a lot of opportunity for a lot of e-commerce brands to leverage Bing ads. And this is a live example. And so, yeah, I briefly wanted to just, again, add an additional bonus here for you guys because I'm currently using this infrastructure to generate like I said, anywhere from three to $400,000 every single month 
you know, using Google, YouTube, and Bing. And obviously I think that this could benefit a lot of you guys out there. So if you're an e-commerce brand and you're looking to get help with your Google, YouTube, or Bing ads, there's a form down below this video. You can fill it out and actually get in contact with me. If you got any value from this video, I'd appreciate it if you dropped a like on the video and of course, subscribe to the channel. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.